Hello my friends, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review. Guys, my heart sinks every time I see Andrew on screen and this week is absolutely no different. But I've always known one thing about Andrew and that is that his duplicity knows no bounds. So on this video, I'm going to lay out bare the two-faced nature of Andrew. Just before I begin, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's subscribed thus far. My subscriptions are really going through the roof at the moment and I'm really glad you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't done so yet, please consider pressing the red button and joining the eBird gang. It's fun over here and also please don't forget to like the video and you can join me on Twitter at eBird Online. And so without further ado, I give you Andrew and Amira. So guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Andrew is both a gaslighter and a liar. But finally, this lumbering fool has tripped himself up. What happens this week absolutely confirms my worst suspicions. He has one face for the camera and another for Amira. So last week we saw Amira, who was unhappily vacationing in Serbia, and unfortunately for her, there was civil unrest and riots everywhere. Perhaps the Serbs had anticipated the imminent arrival of Andrew. <laughs> And apparently, for reasons best known to himself, Andrew had told Amira it's going to be a two-week vacation. He's never bloody been to Serbia, obviously. Oh, Andrew, it's not a two-week vacation for the following reasons. One, because of Covid. Andrew, she's in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. That renders most vacations not fun. Two, there are anti-lockdown riots in and around Belgrade, and Amira is in the middle of said riots. Number three, Amira is in a hotel with no room service. I think there was probably supposed to be room service, but because of COVID, there isn't for whatever reason. And so she has to leave the room amid riots each day to get food. And number four, it's Serbia. It's landlocked. There's no sea. Oh, come on, you guys. I'm from the UK. As far as we're concerned, if there's no sea, it's not a holiday. It's quite simply somewhere else. So the riots have had quite an effect on Amira, and I did have a quick look on the internet just to see what had been happening, and what I saw looked pretty serious. There were rows and rows of police with riot shields, and they were shooting rubber bullets and throwing flares into the crowd, and running at them and whacking them with truncheons. And the demonstrators for their part were throwing missiles at police, and they were just basically tearing the place up. I gotta say, it didn't look like fun, and the noise was colossal as well, and Amira said that she couldn't sleep at all because every night the noise of rioting kept her awake. But thank the Lord, she's got Andrew to lean on. And so we see poor Amira wandering witlessly around Belgrade Square, looking for somewhere to eat. She's walking past graffiti scrawled walls. And finally, she finds a cafe, but they tell her they're closing up and she can't get anything to eat. But when the eBird looked a little closer, I thought, Amira, what time is it? Because by the look of the light, it looks as if it's about 7 pm. Why ever would you come out of your room that late? Remember, it's in Europe, it's about late April, early May. Why didn't you just come out at like 2 pm? Amira is tall, she's classy, she's beautiful, but God certainly didn't bless her with brains. And at this point, I'm beginning to think that Andrew and Amira have just the one brain cell combined. And Amira tells us she's very unhappy with Andrew because he's given her no support. He says he's too busy to talk to her. He's got the five year olds, you see. Oh, Amira, I would have thought that was a good thing. I think Andrew's just busy building his childcare empire from his mother's front room. So Amira calls Andrew and finally he answers. And she says, Andrew, I feel so alone. I'm not allowed to call you. We hardly ever speak. I feel completely isolated and on my own in Serbia. But Andrew knows he's on camera. And Andrew said, why Amira? You can call me any time. You know that, don't you? And guys, this is what I mean about Andrew being two-faced. I think if the camera wasn't on, Andrew would have just said, Amira, I'm busy looking after my five-year-olds and I don't have time for you and your moaning. But he popped his other face on, the nice Andrew face, the fake Andrew face, the one that I always knew wasn't genuine in any way, shape or form. That face. So Andrew then speaks to producers and he looks deceitfully at the camera and says, oh, poor Amira, she's not having a great time. I think she's bored. And honestly, I couldn't make it up. She's not bored, Andrew. She's hungry. She has no room service. She has nothing to do. She's in the middle of civil unrest and riots. Her hotel isn't in the best of areas. There's graffiti on the walls everywhere. And she hasn't got the support of her fiance when she thought she would have. They are Amira's problems. She is not bored. 
and she doesn't have room service because she's in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. She is not moaning simply because she's bored, but this is what Andrew does. I'd like to say that Andrew bends the truth or twists the truth. He doesn't. He's just an effing liar. And I think Andrew's lying because he doesn't have the time to give her any attention. And he knows very well that she's fallen out with her dad and her friends at home and that she's lacking in support. But as per usual, he'd like to deflect any blame away from himself. And so he recasts the narrative as she's bored. And this is all just a mirror's inability to entertain herself. So Andrew decides to cheer her up in a way that only Andrew could ever do. He tells her, think of all the amazing things that you're going to do when you get here to California. We're going camping. Camping? Oh good lord. Does a mirror look like the kind of girl who would enjoy camping? Camping's an activity for those who want to make their lives harder for no discernible reason. Camping is somewhere where eating's a hassle, sleeping's a hassle, getting dressed is a hassle, you're officially mosquito food, and spending a penny takes you right back to Victorian times and smells and standards. You want to mirror when she arrives in America to spend time pretending to be homeless. Yes, that's right, I'm a camperphobe, and for all you camperphiles out there, I know it doesn't have to suck, but Andrew's going to be present, so it's fucking inevitable. Oh, and by the way, if you're listening, Mummy and Daddy Ebird, I really did enjoy all those summers in the south of France. Really, I did. But next, Andrew decides to do what he always does, brings the conversation round to something that he wants to talk about. And always reading the temperature of the room, Andrew says, well, what about having kids? And Amira replied, I need to get to know you a lot better before I decide to have kids with you. Then Andrew said, I need to know now if kids are in the future. And Amira said, quite reasonably, well, if there are fights between us when I get to America, then no, but uh, it depends how we are when I arrive in America. And Andrew said, baby, I think you're attaching the idea of having kids to some behaviour of mine, and that's really hard. Guys, where does he get this condescending tone? He really pees me off. And so Amira said to Andrew, it depends how you are going to be Ev. And Andrew said, baby, I think our perception of what a fight is might be quite different. This, what we're having now, would you term this as a fight? Oh la la, Andrew, come on now, baby. Come on, no, don't be ridiculous. This is not a fight. I'm talking about when you were shouting and screaming at me. And then duplicitous as Andrew said, I'm incredibly sorry if you feel anything like that has happened. And again, guys, I've got to point this out. Did you notice? He didn't say, well, when do I scream and shout at you? When do we fight? I don't understand. He's just trying to cover everything over for the cameras. And then Andrew said, I'm sorry that you think the nature of our relationship isn't worth bringing children into and that really hurts me. Andrew, you know good and well that Amira wants to get to know you properly when she arrives in America before she decides if she wants to start a family with you. Yes, she's in love with you. Yes, she wants a family in the future. She's made that very clear. However, you haven't known each other for two years. You've known each other for probably an amalgamation of about five or six weeks. And Amira has discovered over the last two trips that you are not as supportive and not as intelligent as you might have led her to believe. So now she's seen this change in your behaviour, she's reassessing if she wants to have kids with you. At least she's being upfront. And then Andrew tells more lies, this time to production. And he tells the producer, Amira's just told me I'm not good material for fatherhood. She never said that. Andrew, you goddamn liar. She said she wants to wait and see before starting a family with you. That's all. But Andrew doesn't stop there. Next time we see him at home and he's speaking with his mother. And he tells her in a few hours time, Amira will be leaving for the airport. And he tells us, this is make or break. There are no more 14 day tricks up my sleeve. Andrew, there never were. And then he decides to tell his mum the conversation earlier with Amira about having children, and Andrew lies, like he always does. And Andrew said, she describes me as an angry person. And he said, she's saying she doesn't want kids because we fight too much. And his mum said, what? Well, I've never seen that, and I work with you all the time. The kids don't think that, and the parents of the kids don't think that. No, that's because your son is two-faced. And he shows one side to the world, and another side to Amira, and the e-bird. And his mum said to producers, it makes me so angry. She just brings this up now. Why not six months ago or a year ago? I'm angry and sad that she's led him on. So this lie is twofold. One, Amira never said that. But secondly, remember when we first met Andrew and he was going to meet with his sister? He said then, Amira's having second thoughts about having kids. And this was months ago. So it's not just suddenly, but of course Andrew doesn't correct his mum. And then Andrew tries to wind his mum up a bit by saying, oh well, maybe kids just aren't on my path. 
And his mum said, no, no way. Of course she's going to say that. She's seeing her grandkids go up in smoke. Andrew really is a manipulative so-and-so. And he said to his mum, you've seen all I've done for her. You've seen my love. And Andrew tries to phone Amira and says her phone's off. I don't know where she is. And a little bit later on, Andrew tells the producer, I've just got a text from Amira. She didn't get on the plane. She didn't get on the plane. He seems somewhat surprised. And he told producers, she texted him that she had a panic attack and she didn't want to board the plane. This seems extremely strange because she's had a panic attack after 14 days of hell in Serbia. But then TLC treats us to a 24 hours earlier and we see Amira laying on a hotel bed in floods of tears. And she said, Andrew picks a fight with me the whole night long. He yelled and shouted at me and he sent mean text messages. So they had a big argument, apparently about Amira's reluctance to have children straight away. Which, like I said, he's known for quite some time. But then he texted her a ticket to go to Paris. And he said, two tickets, two choices. Do what you want. I don't care. And so she decided that she was going to go to California anyway. And she got to the airport, although she was obviously very upset. But when she was just at the gate, Andrew actually called her knowing that she was boarding the plane and said, well, you can come, but you're going to meet a very angry fiancé. So at this point, obviously, Amira got cold feet and decided not to go. She phoned her dad and he said, come home right now. And of course, she didn't get on the plane. She called Andrew to let him know what had happened. And Andrew didn't say, come another day or I'll buy you a new ticket. He just said, send the rings back. And Amira tells us it's now over. And that's everything from this couple this week. So what does the eBird make from this? Well, well, guess what? I think that it's Andrew who is lying. And there's a big, massive furore on social media. I know that Jovi has weighed in on this. And Jovi has said, who thinks that Amira's lying? He believes Andrew. So that's one reason why I think that Andrew's lying. Because Jovi is an idiot who doesn't possess the brains he was born with. But the main reason I think that he's lying is that even when we see a conversation happen between the two of them, he reframes the conversation to producers and outright lies or reframes the conversation to his family or to others. And so it's very difficult for me to believe when I see him lying to us, the viewer, and to production and to his mum that he's telling the truth in other areas of his life. Andrew wouldn't know the truth if it came up and bit him. The truth literally bends itself around Andrew. But another reason that I believe Amira and not Andrew is that Amira did 14 days in a Belgrade hellhole. And that's no mean feat. And so it's very difficult for me to believe that she's going to go and do 14 days there and then just decide she's going back to France. Why not just test out America anyway? I think she wanted to go to America partly for Andrew, but also partly for the big adventure of moving somewhere different. And now she's lost out on that. And so I don't see why she would do all of this if she had, as according to Andrew, no intention of ever going to America. I wholeheartedly believe if she had no intention of marrying Andrew, she would have gone to America, stayed there six weeks or eight weeks or whatever, and then done a mic and just jilted Andrew the day before she was going to get married and gone home. That would have ensured her maximum screen time and that would have ensured her maximum clout if that's what she's looking for. Sitting around in Serbia doesn't really help anyone's Instagram page as far as I've ever known. So guys, let me know what you think. Who do you believe? Do you believe Andrew or do you believe Amira? Andrew would have us believe that Amira was never serious about him and this was all about fame and fortune, but I just don't buy it. So guys, let me know what you think down below. And also let me know if you think, like I do, that Andrew's almost as big a liar as Big Ed. Not quite, but not far off. He's extremely manipulative, and for some strange reason, he thinks he's good at being manipulative, but he isn't. But I would honestly love to know what has led him to that conclusion, that he knows how to manipulate or reframe a conversation. He's rubbish at it, but he thinks he's great. Let me know in comments down below and I'll be back soon with another video. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to subscribe and all of that good stuff. It's a great time over here. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you a very good evening.